the board, not me. Patience, O Yeller. Checkmate. Hey guys. Yep. We got explosion at Neil Park. Bad day to go to the park, I guess. That's a custom job. I don't think this is the end game. We save you IT. How can I help? My internet has passed away. <sighs> Let's see if we can't bring that back to life. Time is my enemy. Stay seated. What the hell is this? You will die today unless you do exactly as you're told. <laughs> it's military. Pressure sensitive. Two floors up. Bankers, hedge fund crooks. I want you to rob them. Do I have your attention now, Orlando? Or should I call you Red Knight? That was your hacker handle, wasn't it? I I've been out of the game a long time now. I want to own the owners. You want their servers? You're crazy. If I get caught, I'm facing 20. <laughs> time for the confession. My name is Orlando Fryer. I am the person responsible for the bombing in the park and Hudson Towers. Has he got a family? I want to be the first psycho with kids. I just want to weigh our option before we orphan his baby. It's about to get a whole lot hotter. Why do you care about his family? I don't. Other than a hacker, ain't a bomber. Get our eye on the sky up. I'm in position. Time is everything. <laughs> Building wired to blow up. Maybe Orlando's a patsy. Tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. SWAT prep for assault. Code red, all hands on deck! What have you done? Who knows how many more could die? Got it! He's got a dead man switch ready to blow. No way out. <laughs> Chief, we're picking up another heat signature. Life or death, you hey. choose! Run! Time is my enemy. Time is my enemy. Time is my enemy. You're in the hot seat now. This now, or we'll end it for him. No! Time is running. Out. Come on, O'Yell. James, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. My first question is I'm, I'm sure you get this a lot, but your workflow as a filmmaker, how in the world do you do what you do? Because you're you're kind of a throwback to a lot of those old studio filmmakers from back in the day when they'd be under contract and in one one or two years there'd be five or six other other films and you can actually get a wealth of just stuff if you're a cinephile how do you do that in today's age um you know it, it, it's kind of like a couple fold you know during covid after you know when i was sitting at home for like a couple months um you know and and nothing was going on and, and i was just like man like this is my time off. I don't need any time off <laughs> when, when this is over. So, you know, like I hit the ground running and uh, my dad always used to tell me that, um, you know, cause I'm, I'm 30 years old and, and he used to say like, you know, I, I made my first movie at 18 years old. And he said, you know, no matter what you do at some point in your life, all the movies you make before you're 30, you're going to be known as like your early movies. And so I kind of like took that to heart and was like, okay, you know, let me, let me just kind of practice as much as possible. And like, you know, like almost like as if like, you know, going to like the gym, like you're working out like a muscle. So like, I'm just like practicing and, and, and doing it as much as possible to get more, um, you know, on set experience. And, 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 you know, so uh, that's part of the, part of the thing. And then also like, I've just always admired like Takashi Miike, who's like, a, he's a, a Japanese director who's directed like, I don't know, like almost 150 features at this point. He's he's done so many movies. Um, and <laughs> so for me, I, I just kind of, I love the craft of storytelling and, and I really just really love and enjoy what I do. So it's not work. And when you're not working and you're just having fun, like why wouldn't you want to have fun all the time? You know? <laughs> what, are, what are some of those lessons you learned up to the age of 30 that you brought into hot seat because in many ways th this movie is several stories in one and i'm sure not just in the edit but just in the production just keeping track of all it's not an a to b kind of thing which is it's multi-layered how were you able to, what's some, what are some of those lessons you took into this film with that kind well, of storytelling yeah well one of the things is like i'm unbelievably ocd so like if you look at my like uh my 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 scripts like i've color coded notes for every single actor every single like you know uh department and and like i draw overhead maps of all the locations where i like pre-plan all the blocking like i do a lot a lot of prep uh and you know i have extensive shot lists for every scene so like everything is like really really planned out um and 
you know, a lot of that is just like from in the beginning when I was like younger, I would just wing it. You know, when I was like 18, 19, I was just kind of figuring it out as I went. And that just did not work. Um, you know, I like I, I, I've made jokes a lot, but, you know, I've said stuff like, you know, I just I try to fail better every time I make a movie. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and my first my first movie ever is a complete and utter failure, by, which uh, was the one I made at 18 years old. It was my pure joy. But it was a movie that should have been like 80 minutes and it's two and a half hours long. So uh, so I, I definitely learned about pacing that time around uh, and like, you know, how to tighten stuff and, and, uh, and so, <laughs> and, and keep it moving. And, and I feel like, you know, definitely coming into hot seat, you know, it's, it's a, how do you make a movie where somebody is pretty much sitting in a room, entertaining, engaging and fast paced. And that's something that like, we, we really went in with that mindset. And, you know, I'm, 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 I try to put myself in the perspective of the audience of what they want in a movie out of a movie like this. And, and I try to deliver that as much as possible uh, and hopefully it works and hopefully it doesn't. And if not, I'll, I'll learn from it. And if so, I did learn from it. <laughs> what? James, you're, an, you're a veteran filmmaker, but what is the stress balance with a joy in making a film that in another world would be a 50 to a hundred million dollar movie, but you're working with a certain budget. So can you, is there, well, how do you balance that stress with that? And then also the joy in saying, hey, you know what? I did this with, with X amount of money and F you guys, I was able to do it, you know? You know, I mean, I'd say that there's, I wouldn't say stress. I would say there is pressure. You know, there's a pressure of like, you know, the, the thing is, is when somebody rents this movie, right? Uh, they're, they're paying the same five ninety nine or four ninety nine, whatever it costs uh, as, as they would for the, you know, $50 million version of this movie. So there's a pressure for the audience to deliver an engaging movie no matter what the budget is i don't get to come in and explain to the audience oh hey sorry i only had x amount of money to make this you know what i mean or uh x amount of time or whatever like i you know if i sign up to make a movie i gotta make it what i believe is going to be a good movie no matter what there are no excuses and so ultimately you know i think there's the pressure there but like I, you know for me, I've done it so many times that it's just fun. You know, I, I planted and I'm having fun the entire time. I was surrounded by an awesome crew and like an unbelievably talented cast. I mean, you know, I had like Kevin Dillon, Mel Gibson, you know, Shannon Doherty, Eddie Steeples, Michael Welch, uh, Lydia Hull, uh, uh, you know, Anna, Anna Har. Uh, I mean, you know, Sam Ashgari. Like I had all these really great and cool people to work with. And so when you're surrounded by awesome people, and you just get to have like a good time. I mean, it, it was just a lot of fun. Uh, and there was a lot of, uh, you know, repeat people that I've worked with, like, you know, the DP and I, this was our third movie together, me and the editor, our third movie, uh, me and the composer, this was our third movie, me and Shannon Doherty, this was our sixth movie, uh, Michael Welch, this was our sec uh, second or third uh, Eddie, this was our third. Uh, I mean, so uh, Anna Har, this was our sixth. So it's a lot of people that I've worked with a lot. So it's 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 like a family environment. It's like you know we're going in the trenches again together. So for me, I mean, I, I just have as much fun as possible, and I try to keep a very light and positive uh, vibe on set at all times. Um, it's kind of my my go to. You know, I I feel like a lot of people when they think of Kevin Dillon, they're thinking of drama johnny drama from entourage but you and i we're, we're lifelong cinephiles and we you know I, I was looking at your twitter feed and you're saying that how you wish one of your i guess regrets is you you wish you were able to work with ray liotta and as soon as you said that tweeted that i'm thinking oh you know who was great in a ray liotta film kevin dylan in no escape so i mean how awesome is it you know how awesome was it for you to work with kevin and i do you feel he's underrated because he's had such a great diverse body of work and yeah. I'm sure that, yeah, that's a reason why he, he anchors your film. So, I mean, the guy worked with Oliver Stone twice, man. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's amazing. He's an amazing actor. He's not just Johnny drama. The one thing that was really funny is, you know, I was talking to, to Kevin the first time I'm talking to him and like, you know, I nerd out about movies like all the time. And, and, and so like, you know, I was like, you know, he was thinking like, Oh, I'd like him as Johnny drama or whatever. And I was like super nerded out. I was like, nah, man, you were in the blob. <laughs> I was like, you were in the blob with Shawnee Smith. I was like, you know, that was like, that was my, like my favorite of the, like not even the Oliver Stone stuff, which I mean, mind you, like, obviously those are amazing movies, but for me, like, I was like, man, the blob. <laughs> yeah, that's so. And also, 
I, is that another great part of your job? You're, you mentioned, just a, proudly mentioned, all the people in your cast in, in Hot Seat. Is, is that one of the joys, the fact that what, whatever project you are embarking on, you're not going to... You're gonna have some. You're not gonna go with the predictable choices. You're gonna go with the ones that you really want in your film. And people like me who are pop culture geeks are gonna. Go, I'm gonna go. Oh, I'm so glad this actor or actress is is working and has a plum role in your film. You know. So. You know. You know. For me, it's it's part of some of the most fun stuff I get to do is work with interesting cast and and I get excited like a lot. Like you know, uh, on one of my movies, I worked with Dante Basco, who was who was Rufio and Hook. I thought that was super awesome. Like you know, I like for me it's like I, I I grew up watching movies I learned how to make movies from watching movies you know what I mean so like you know I didn't go to film school I, I watched movies you know what I mean so so for me it's like amazing because I'm like wow I get to like work with the people that I watched you know like I, I get to watch these movies and then I go and I like get to be on set with these people like that's so cool to me so I mean I get unbelievably nerded out and excited about that type of thing and and so, like, I have, like, a list of people I really want to work with. Uh, Ray Liotta was, sadly, the number one person on that list. Um, so, you know, that that's not going to work out, which, you know, but I did try. I did try many times <laughs> to work with Ray. Uh, it just didn't work out for whatever reasons. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely, uh, for me, it's just like, wow, like, how cool is it to, like, go to work and you get to work with, you know, your idols? I mean, you know, it's it's amazing. Yeah. Speaking of idols, my, my father passed passed on about five years ago. But so, so you as a filmmaker, you know, you're making that neo-noir film based on your father's screenplay. And I'm sure you learned a lot about regarding your work ethic from your father. And then how much does it mean just for you personally to know this is a project that you're self-financing and you're putting it out there. And I'm, I can't wait to check it out. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I'm really excited about that project because you know, it's my dad did it as a play. And so, you know, I, I remember having an argument with him about like, you know, why are you spending all this money on a play in Los Angeles? Like, it's not going to make any money. And he goes, that's not the point. And so I thought like the best way to honor him was to, to make that movie and not really make it with any intention of making money. So in doing that, I, I used my money instead of other people's money. <laughs> and I was like, you know, it's not the point, you know? So I, I, I kind of went really out there. It's a really strange movie that goes through many different genres and and you know it's uh it's a lot of fun i mean it's about two writers that are writing a play that becomes like a neo-noir play but as they're writing it um the characters like come to life in front of them so it's like you know certain things start happening where you know in one scene they decide oh this guy's british and then like later they're like no let's not have him be british anymore and so they like rewrite it so he changes and then the actor starts performing it differently it's it's a lot of fun it's really weird it's really out there um and uh so it's it's something that really uh you know i thought really honored my father's sense of humor and sensibilities and uh, and really for me it was just uh, a really beautiful experience yeah you James, so you didn't go to film school. You learned from watching films, and I'm sure you learned from your, your father's approach to writing and then whatnot in television as well. But is there is there a case to be made if someone's going to watch? Is there such such a thing called a Takashi Takashi Miike film school where you can just watch a whole bunch of films? And because he's a, your number one guy, right? Did you what did you learn from him? And can someone actually save the thousands and thousands of dollars and watch his films, and then vis a vis watch your films as far as learning how to mount a project? I mean, you know, you could watch you could watch a ton of different movies, not just uh, not this not this Takashi Miike's. I mean, you know, his movies. I, I just liked him because he changed every genre. Like he just kind of did whatever. Like he made great kids movies. He made great like you know unbelievably gory movies. He made great you know mobster movies. He made like everything you know. Um, but uh, and he still does. Uh, you know, his uh, Thirteen Assassins. I mean, look at he makes like some of these movies are insane. Ichi the Killer, Audition, one of the best horror movies ever made um so you know i uh one missed call um so i mean he's uh uh he, he's just made a lot of really great stuff so uh but for me i just think like you know you can you can kind of do what my dad did with me which is when i was little i would watch movies with my dad and he would pause them and ask me questions and i used to think like you know he was just checking to see if i was paying attention but i realized by the questions he was asking he was seeing if i was able to analyze what was going on and so like he would pause it and ask like you know hey why did the camera move that way or why is that character doing that and stuff and when you start to look at that and you're breaking it down if you start to take that mind 
and thought process into like a scene and your scene work of like, okay, well, why would the camera move this way? Is that because it's relating to the emotion of the character? Like, why would you place this here? Why do you want to be, you know, framed up in a certain way? And you start to think like that, uh, you know, you can start piece, piecing stuff together. Um, you know, but for me, I'm a very, I, I learned from being hands-on. So like, you know, I learned from my mistakes, you know, I learned from making a movie that didn't quite work. And uh, once I watched the movie with like, you know, fresh eyes, I was able to go, well, this didn't work because I didn't do this and this. And then I started to kind of restructure it. So, you know, I think really if, if people want to be filmmakers, they should go out there and, and shoot some stuff, even if it's short film with their friends. And, you know, the more you do stuff, uh, the more you'll learn from it. James, final question, a final couple questions or movie questions. First off, right off the top of your head, very difficult question. Can you name one of your all-time favorite movies? And what is it about the specific film that resonates with you? Okay, so, I mean, I have a top five. I have a top five for this question in no particular order. But it goes Goodfellas, uh, uh, Shawshank Redemption, uh, Kill Bill Volume 1, um, uh, Old Boy, and Sin City. Wow. Very, 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 very good. Sin City because of just the technology and how it was pretty much groundbreaking in its day? Sin City because that was my favorite comic book and it's literally shot for shot the comic books. Uh, it's like the most faithful comic book adaptation ever. Um, and, you know, it's literally like they used the comics as a storyboard. So like you see the shots directly out of the comics in the movie. And really, I mean, honestly, Mickey Rourke as Marv is probably some of the best superhero casting ever. Um, you know, he literally was that guy. Like it just, it was so perfect. And James, before you go, we, we do a, a segment for our podcast called what's in the box. So we ask filmmakers and actors to pick a movie for, for us to put in the box and then Bruce will take it out randomly and then we'll review it. I usually ask p- favorite movies, but James from you, not just hot seat, but from your resume, what, what film would we, of yours would, should we put in the box and why? <laughs> um, crap. Uh, what kind of movies do you guys like? <laughs> we love horror. I mean, you've done horror. We love all, we love all kinds of kinds of genres. Um, I would say you know either either Pernicious or Bethany if you're going to go horror. Um, those would be fun ones to to have in uh, have in the box. Okay, cool. P- pick one, Pernicious or Beth- Bethany. Um, which one? Um, do you like gorier movies or psychological movies? More? Psychological. Put Bethany in the box. Great. James, thank you so much for your time. Really enjoyed your film. All right. Thank you so much, too. Talk to you for the next one, which was, what, what, in two weeks? So, yeah, you know. I'll see you in, uh, a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, James, so much. All right. Thank you so much. Right. Bye.